So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you all so much for attending the webinar this evening and for your interest in Bay Mini Grant Program. Um, this evening, I just want to go over and I'm hoping you get a better understanding for who we are as the Tampa Bay Estuary Program, uh, how you can improve your chances of being awarded a Bay Mini Grant, um, and then what types of projects we funded in the past. Um, this project, is, or excuse me, this webinar is being recorded. So following the event, you will receive both a copy of the webinar and the presentation. I will also provide to you an application packet, um, which I will talk about briefly throughout this presentation. Um, and then I'll send to you any associated links for templates and any online materials. So before we get started, just want to remind everyone of a few housekeeping items. Um, please keep your microphones muted throughout the presentation. This just helps to reduce any excess noise um, and any feedback to make others, um, to make it easier for others to listen in. Um, questions can be typed in at any time on the text box. On the right hand side, you'll see a drop down menu that says chat. So you can just go ahead and um, type your question in there and we will get to all of the questions at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, uh, there are 28 declared estuaries of national significance around the country. Each one has a designated program to protect and restore the water quality and ecological integrity throughout that watershed. So in our region, our main estuary programs include us, the Tampa Bay National Estuary Program, uh, the Sarasota Bay National Estuary Program, just south of us, and the Coastal and Heartland National Estuary, estuary Partnership, and that's in Charlotte Harbor. So in 1990, Congress declared Tampa Bay as an estuary of national significance which paved the way for the development of a long-term plan for restoring Tampa Bay. So the Tampa Bay Estuary Program is a partnership of governments at the local, state, and federal level with the mission of building partnerships to restore, protect Tampa Bay. This is accomplished through the implementation of a scientifically sound community-based management plan. So what is a Bay Mini Grant? A Bay Mini Grant is basically funds awarded to community groups with projects that address Bay restoration and education. These are basically a vehicle to involve community members in Bay restoration and education about important issues impacting Tampa Bay. They are awarded to organizations, not individuals. So if you are an individual who is interested in participating in a Bay Mini Grant or the Bay Mini Grant program, please contact myself and I will help connect you with an organization that um, meets your topic of interest. So if you've driven around the Tampa Bay watershed, you've likely seen the Tampa Bay Estuary Specialty License Plate, also called the Tarpon Tag. So this plate is very popular among fishermen in our area. Uh, sales of this plate exclusively fund the Bay Mini Grant Program. We've awarded over $2 million from the Tarpon Tag directly to community grants. And this year we have about $70,000 available to fund community projects. This year, it's important to remember that the deadline is September 25th. Submissions can be online via a job form or mailed in directly to the Tampa Bay Estuary Program office. So no email applications will be accepted. Grant limits are $5,000. Historically, they've been set up on a reimbursement system and allow you to invoice the program up to once a month. Projects should be completed with within one year of the PO execution date, which usually is in January. So that would mean that you have through um, the calendar year to complete your project. And then finally, any community organization in the Tampa Bay watershed is eligible to apply. 
So these are organizations in Pinellas, Manatee, Hillsborough, and sections of Pasco and Polk counties. Um, a detailed watershed map is available online and in the application packet that I'll send out after this. So just remember that a Bay mini grant should be $5,000 or less and promote citizen involvement in the protection, education, and restoration of Tampa Bay. So to be eligible to receive funding, the project must focus on one or more of our program goals. These goals are explained in further detail in our comprehensive conservation and management plan, also called our CCMP, uh, which can be found on our website. Um, and so this plan goes into explicit detail and describes each one of uh, these project goals and how it relates to Bay Mini Grants. So this year, in order to achieve specific goals outlined in our draft five-year strategic plan, we will be prioritizing projects related to emerging contaminants. Emerging contaminants can mean micro or macro plastics, uh, endocrine disruptors, or other things. Again, for specific definitions, consult the CCMP. Projects could include education through research or citizen science. They could also be restoration with various types of debris removal projects. So who should apply for a Bay Mini Grant? Uh, citizen scientists, community scientists, nonprofits, HOAs, and neighborhood associations, community organizations, which includes for-profits, as well as government organizations. Government organizations do require strong community involvement to be funded. So there are two basic types of projects funded by Bay Mini Grants, education projects and restoration projects. Education projects should clearly define the target audience and benefit more than one single class or school. So it should deal with a broader audience. Uh, education projects could be citizen science, giving talks or virtual seminars. Another popular idea is the creation of videos and online education tools, which will likely be in high demand in the upcoming school year. Restoration projects should not be on private property. Um, and should include explicitly how the project will invite community participation. The project should also include a maintenance and monitoring strategy and clearly define project size. And both educational projects as well as restoration projects should provide a clear outline for how you will measure project success. So this is a list of a few things that won't be funded. Um, what won't be funded would be existing software or hardware, costs outside of the scope of the grant, any overhead or administrative fees not related to the grant project, removal of exotic species from your personal residential property, purchasing of t-shirts, lobbying, or attendance at meetings or conferences. It should be noted that applications where our funds make up only a small part of a really large project usually haven't been funded in the past. You will come across this term matching terms in the application. Matching funds are not required but are highly encouraged. Match can be in the form of cash, in-kind services such as volunteer labor, and volunteer labor is valued at $23.93 per hour per person. It also includes the use of equipment as well as any donation of plants. So use the match funds to your benefit. Awards can range from $500 to $5,000. You can apply for any amount of funds within the, that range, but be sure that it, it is backed by support in your budget, which I'll go over in a little bit. It is important to remember that email applications will not be considered. So while I'm happy to answer any questions or concerns you might have, 
uh, via email or over the phone you must apply either online through the job form or through the mail in the past some folks might have hand dropped materials off directly at our program office however unfortunately because of coronavirus restrictions no one is allowed to enter the building or hand drop at hand drop off any materials so therefore applications if not completed online unfortunately must go through the mail you are welcome to submit as many applications as you want but only one project per organization will be funded this helps us spread funds throughout the entire watershed instead of focusing efforts on one specific organization or one location in the watershed. You can receive funding for the same project twice in a five-year period. And the reason for that is that these mini grants are supposed to be for seed money to help get a project started or help expand a current project. So we recognize that these are very strange and challenging times, both for individuals and organizations. So in light of the current climate, we've made several adjustments. Uh, Bay Mini Grants historically have run on a reimbursement basis. However, we realize that having funds up front might be difficult for some organizations right now. So we're willing to work around that on a case-by-case -case basis. If reimbursement is holding you back from applying, please contact me directly. We don't want this to inhibit any organization from applying or receiving grant funds. Bay Mini Grant Project should always include some level of community involvement and community support. Community involvement is likely going to look very different this year, so we're encouraging creativity and try to think out of the box. I've seen some organizations using um, contactless pickup for cleanups and plantings. Um, there's DIY events like the Great Bay Scallop Search happening over several weeks as opposed to on a single day. And then consider hosting a short virtual webinar or workshop as I'm sure parents participating in e-learning will be looking for these types of events in the future. But basically, we don't want the COVID-19 situation to deter any organization from applying for funds. So if you have any concerns, please contact me and we can work together to brainstorm ideas or come up with solutions. So how do you apply for a Bay Mini Grant? As I mentioned earlier, there are two, there are two avenues for applying. The first is via a, an online job form. The form sh should be saving as you are working through it. However, I haven't found an ability to set up an account and save your information and then come back. Therefore, I recommend that once you start your online form to complete it all at once. The other way to apply is to mail in your application. So I have provided fillable PDFs as well as Word documents for that. Um, and make sure that you address it to myself and include the suite number. So a few reminders when completing your application. Most fields have maximum word counts. So be clear and be concise. Be aware of different formatting issues. Um, this is particularly concerning with uh, the job form. Um, so be aware of phone numbers, dollars, et cetera. Make sure you complete all required fields and your application must include the application and the budget. Without both of those, you are not eligible for funding. So this year we have provided a budget template in Excel, Word, and fillable PDF, all which are available on our website. I personally find Excel the easiest to use uh, simply because you can have use the um, functionality of equations and have the program do some of the work for you. 
The application packet that I will be sending out after the webinar has two sample budgets, one with adequate detail and one without. So one thing to keep in mind when you're creating your budget is this is an estimate and costs might change from the time that the application is prepared to the time that purchases are actually made. Therefore, funds might need to be reproportioned or reallocated from other parts of the project to accommodate those unforeseen costs. The most important takeaway is uh, that managers should call or email me with any budget change requests. Requests need to be made and approved before the purchases are made. In each of the budget templates, you will see a line item for a sign shown here in the right hand corner. Um, only some restoration projects are appropriate to include a sign at the project location. And the sign basically promotes both your project and the license plate, which helps fund more main mini grants. So if appropriate, you can choose either an indoor or an outdoor sign and it will be added to the total project cost. So for example, if your project costs in total $5,000 and you um, are going to add a sign, then you add $75 on top of that for a total of $5,075. So this is the only time when your grant could exceed $5,000. Your budget should include all estimated expenditures. So for plants, include the names and the sizes, and they must be Florida natives. Include any paid labor, and be specific, include the hourly rate, as well as the number of estimated hours of work. Include any supplies like shovels, trash bags, masks for volunteers, include any equipment, and if the budgeted item exceeds $500, just remember that you will need to have two quotes before you can purchase that item. And make sure to include all sources of match funding and other uh, funding commitments. And again, use volunteer labor as $23.93. To develop a strong budget, it is clear to be, it is important to be clear about where the funding is going. So if salary dollars will be used to pay another organization, make sure you identify that other organization. Consider breaking your project into different tasks and creating a timeline for task completion. By deconstructing the project into smaller pieces, you're less likely to forget those critical supplies. And again, be specific and descriptive. So if one of your line items is food for volunteers, include the number of volunteers as well as the dollars per meal. And again, examples can be found on our website as well as in the application packet. So the application deadline as a reminder is September 25th at 3 p.m. So at this time, the online job form will close and I will collate all of the project applications and send them to our community advisory committee to review. So this is the committee that actually votes on which projects should be funded. So project proposals are judged on five specific criteria. The first two are weighted the most heavily and then the others are also important. So basically, I recommend to use this guide as a or use this page as a guide for the development of your proposal. Uh, so one of the selection criteria is the strength of the proposal. So does your project address a CCMP goal? Um, Keep in mind that projects addressing emerging contaminants will be prioritized. And then include how likely the project is to be successfully implemented. The second criteria is the ability of the applicant. So make sure that you demonstrate your ability to complete the proposed project and explain whether or not the 
uh, land is community owned, public owned, or conservation easement. In cost justification, make sure you include a detailed budget showing that costs are appropriate to the scope of your work. And also include match funds to enhance your project justification. Demonstrate how projects will improve Tampa Bay. So explicitly state how the project will target Bay issues. And then explicitly describe how the project will result in restoration, enhancement, or protection of Tampa Bay. And then finally, demonstrate community support. So show long-term support for the implementation, maintenance, and monitoring of your project. And it should reflect some measure of community support. And one way to achieve this is by including letters of support from partnering organizations and any organizations who own the property that you'll be working on. So after the CAC votes on the projects, they send their recommendations to the Tampa Bay Estuary Program Executive Director, Ed Sherwood, and then he presents those recommendations to the program's management and policy boards for final approval. So the review meeting is in November and notifications of awardees will go out in sometime in December. So grants will likely begin in January of 2021 and then you have the entire project year to complete that project. Projects must begin within six months of the award. So that means your project must have started by June of 2021. If your project is awarded, I will send you um, a letter of agreement, basically agreeing on the scope of work, uh, and then ask that you sign it and return it back to me, at which time I can um, execute a purchase order. And then you can begin your work. So if awarded a grant, you will need to submit quarterly and final reports. Templates are provided for both uh, and ask specific questions regarding project status and updates. I will also be asking you to complete pre and post project surveys. And this just helps us get a better understanding of how the project is success. Also, you will be required to submit any invoices with the receipts for reimbursement. Um, it should be on organization letterhead and you can invoice the program a maximum of one invoice per month. So um, that doesn't mean one receipt per month. That means collate all your receipts and invoice us. You are expected to uh, come to a Bay mini grant sharing day, which is usually in March or May of the following year, um, in which grant awardees give a short presentation to the CAC members. So some of the projects that we have funded in the past include combined restoration and education projects. Uh, this one involved water quality improvements by an HOA who partnered with a local school group. So together they planted native plants around a stormwater pond. We also fund citizen science projects. So this project in particular um, is a water quali quality sampling project at a local school. And so grant funds were used to purchase water quality testing equipment, which can be reused year after year. So in this project, students record water quality data and track changes in the Bay, which helps develop Bay stewards. We also find just restoration projects. Um, these are usually projects which have significant partnership. This one in particular um, had four different partners. And it, because of that, they were able to plant over 700 different plants um, and monitoring of the site still continues today. We also fund projects which develop educational tools. So these materials are supplied free of charge to teachers and parents. 
If you are planning on developing a resource, I would suggest making it available electronically so that it's easily accessible for users. Again, this is likely a tool that is going to be in high demand in the upcoming school year and um, after that. Also, I would do a little bit of research about what products are already available as you don't want to duplicate effort. And then make sure that you abide by any STEM or state education guidance. Otherwise, teachers won't be able to utilize it in their um, teaching plan. And finally, we also fund debris removal projects. This one in particular was a project which removed derelict ghost crab traps in Tampa Bay. Um, these are just examples of different projects that we have funded um, and should not limit your um, creativity in developing a project idea. So following the completion of each grant cycle, all completed projects are eligible to win the Golden Mangrove Award. So this is an award which highlights the most outstanding project in each grant cycle. This award is awarded by the Community Advisory Committee, which is also the same committee that originally recommends which project, project should be funded. So in order to be eligible, you must finish and submit all reports on time. And then winners are presented with a plaque at a CAC meeting, as well as at a management or policy board meeting. And I hope this webinar gave you some, answered some of the burning questions that you had. Um, Please remember to spread the word about the um, TARPON tag as we want to um, continue to support funding pro these types of grants. So I will now um, open it up to any questions, if anyone has any questions. Did you want to do it on the, uh, can we do it verbally? Sure, you can do it verbally. Okay, I <laughs> wasn't sure you wanted to type it in. Okay, so as far as who who qualifies, um, I do have an organization called Tampa Riverwalk Cleanup. And yeah. I am not a 501C yet. I'm kind of on the fence about doing that, but I work with other 501Cs. I work with, uh, basically it's an umbrella of people that come in under my kind of leadership to to do the advocacy along the along the Hillsborough River, do mm -hmm. I need to actually uh, become a 501c to get the grant, or is the umbrella kind of good enough, or or what are your is your recommendation on that? I wouldn't think that I know exactly what your organization is, um, and you have significant community involvement in your projects. Um, so I would think that you would entirely be eligible as you are now. Um, I wouldn't think that you would have to wait in order to uh, become, like wait until you become a 501c3 in order to apply. So yes, please apply. Perfect, thank you. Uh, um, I have a question, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I'm. I belong to a very new organization in Gulfport. We're calling ourselves Sustainability something. I wish I wish I could remember. And we have lots and lots of ideas. Um, but my question is similar to his. We don't. We're very loosey goosey at this point, and um, we believe that we can get some help from the city of Gulfport. So, is that something we need to have? Um, the city involvement or is it simply citizens? We welcome partnerships, um, but the, the main priorities of Bay Mini Grants is including community involvement okay. and then focusing your uh, proposals or your projects around those CCMP program goals. Okay, okay. And my other question is um, you recommended having um, letters of recommendation. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they're not going to be included on the um, JOT form. How do we get them to you? There is a place on the JOT form where you can um, upload any documents. 
So oh. you upload, that's where you would upload like your budget as well as mm -hmm. um, any of those letters of support. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks so much for your interest. Sheila, I think uh, Doug Hicks had a question next and then followed by Winnie. Well, great. Uh, hi, Sheila. Thank you. I'm in uh, Northeast Seminole Heights. Okay. Welcome. Okay. <clears throat> we, we live very near uh, the lower part of the Hillsborough River, being defined as the dam all the way down through to the bay. Uh, I've been trying for several years to prevent trash. There are about 30 different gullies, et cetera, from the dam down to the bay where trash washes off both banks of the river, unguarded, unfiltered, directly into the river, and eventually wins its way into the bay and sinks to the bottom. My question is, if I can prevent trash on banks of the Hillsborough River from going into the water in the first place, is that something eligible for this type of grant? Yes, so any organization and projects involving um, involving helping the bay throughout the watershed are eligible. So the um, Hillsborough River is one of the major rivers that feeds into Tampa Bay. So I would say yes, um, we're picking up trash and um, limiting the amount of trash that actually gets into major yeah. Tampa Bay it, would definitely be a Thank you. For Preventing, preventing the trash by using filters to trap the trash before it actually enters the water and then maintaining by emptying those filters on the land as opposed to the trash gets into the water is a basic concept. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds yeah. good to me. We've actually funded <laughs> Thank you. several HOAs and community groups that have installed some stormwater filters in the past through Bayman grants. So that would absolutely oh, great. Be yeah, but briefly, uh, you're familiar with Riverboat Joe? No? No, I don't River think so. Riverboat Joe Coon? Okay. All right. Uh, he, he's, he's the main man on, on the river near Hannah's World. He builds docks and works the river. He has a pontoon boat, which is his working boat, and he sees the trash every day. We're friends, and when it rains, I take photos. I have taken, at one time, 156 different photos of trash in the river, Edit toward the bay after a rain. That's what we're trying to stop. So thank you for your time, Sheila. Thank you for your interest. I look forward to seeing your proposal. I think uh, Winnie was next. Malumba. Um, yes. Hi. Um, hi, Sheila. Thank you so much for this. Um, so I work at USF St. Pete, and um, I was just wondering. I know we need engagement, community engagement, and I was. Just Wondering, I mean, we have a project and USF itself is a community, like a huge community and we'll have student engagement. Mm -hmm. So whatever we're gonna do, we will also like publicize to the community, like to the public community. But I was just wondering if our community as USF qualifies as engaging the community. Like what do you describe as engagement, community engagement? I would say that utilizing the USF community would satisfy that community engagement because you're incorporating our students. Um, and so, so I would say that that does satisfy it, but I would recommend um, publicizing it so that folks who are outside of the USF community can attend your project. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that does, it answers the question because it's more of a research project. So mm -hmm. a lot of students engaged in it, but we can publicize the results and the findings to the community. We can always have a webinar and, you know, for the community to chime in and, you know, just uh, understand what we're trying to do at USF. Yeah, I think that would be a great option um, is incorporating the students in the actual research and the data collection and then offering a webinar of the results to at the end of the project. Great, thank you so much. I think Allison Date was next. Hi, um, I, I'm a part, we just met for today for the first time, a part of a homeowners association and the Tampa Bay um, Garden Club. And we're uh, starting a project to to um, improve the uh, restore a spring in Fred Ball Park, which goes into the bay, 
And uh, so I, we were just, I'm just, we were looking at your grant as a possible money source. And so it would involve people in the community, um, probably with doing planting. And I, I just wondered if you could, is what are what do you mean by emergent contaminants? Is that like people throwing litter into the bay, or what 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 is? Could you define that? For yeah. Me? So emerging contaminants relates to um, like microplastics and macroplastics, uh -huh. basically marine debris, um, as well as um, types of endocrine disruptors. Um, and different chemicals that are found in um, like some of our cosmetic products getting into the bay. Mm -hmm. so those are the main types of emergent contaminants that we are focusing on. Okay, got it. All right, uh, I guess that's all I have to ask you right now. Thank you. Thank you, and if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, email me. Thank you very much. Neil Highland had a question in the chat. He said, can you please clarify the length of the proposal, i.e. the page limits? Hey, Neil, uh, thanks for joining. Um, the, I'm thinking about the hard copy one um, and it is three pages um, and it, the, it's broken down into specific questions. Um, so, so it's not all one big project proposal, but broken into those different components. Um, and then, so on top of that three pager, then um, you also have your letters of support as well as your uh, budget. And then Scott Harris in the chat said to Doug to please reach out to him on Facebook Riverwalk group if you're not seeing that Doug. Great. Are there any other burning questions? Thank you. Hearing none, thank you all so much for attending. Um, I'm going to drop my email address. Drop my email address in the chat uh, if you have any specific questions regarding your project or um, concerns about coronavirus and how that might impact your project, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to assist uh, with whatever you all need. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila.